Hi, this is Mark Finn here at the Ritz-Carlton in Philadelphia at HRO Today. I'm here with Jessica Miller-Merrill, or Jessica M Squared, uh, for, for abbreviation purposes. Jessica, I was hoping you could tell everyone a little bit about yourself and who you are and what you do. Oh, thank you. Well, my name is Jessica, and um, I have a popular human resource, resources and workplace blog. I guess several sites actually, um, where we talk about human capital topics, recruiting, social media, all the sort of things that practitioners in this space are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. I also work a lot with service providers and helping them be able to talk directly to HR because we spend a lot of time on the phone, cold calling, emailing, uh, but there isn't really any meaningful conversations oftentimes that are happening um, in those interactions. Jessica's a, a fantastic expert on a lot of the hot topics happening uh, in the space. We were talking about some of them, some of them yesterday. I, I did read, however, one interesting blog that you wrote recently, and the title of that blog was "I like my HR technology like I like my men." So my question is, how do you like your men? Well, I like to do my research. Um, uh, the blog post, which is somewhat personal, I, I like to have this sort of personal story that I weave into a, a business lesson or a topic. And uh, the story is that I didn't, I had a failed marriage. Um, it didn't go very well for me. And so I was young and I really took stock and kind of looked at what I'm doing, uh, what I really want, and did a lot of research. And so I think that when you're selecting an HR technology product, you really need to understand exactly what you want and then spend the time pre-qualifying before you go down that road and make a commitment. I was hoping you were going to say Australian, but that's, that's fine. Um, there is, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty out there uh, given, given that there's a lot of technology and a lot of new directions on a lot of different things. And I think uh, HR managers and HR leaders and recruiters out there are really just trying to understand you know, what to do or where to go. Um, what tips would you provide those people? I, I think that there's a lot of information online, so I think it's good to go online and, and talk to other practitioners. One of the things I like blogging so much is that there are so many great people out there who are sharing their stories and they're they're in the folds of dealing with a workplace issue as a recruiter or HR person. So looking for those resources, but then uh, maybe sitting down with an expert in the space and kind of talking through. Uh, thirdly, the most important thing in my mind is end users. Right. Uh, as someone who has had to, you know, 17 clicks to be able to hire one person in an ATS, mind you, I have 150 people that I have to push through my applicant tracking system, that takes time. Senior business um, decision makers in HR and human capital, they don't think about those things because they don't have to do them. But these are the small things that they need to think about to really make the technology product friendly for the user, um, happy HR people. It's kind of like happy wife, happy life. Yeah. Happy field HR person uh, makes for an engaged workforce. Jessica, you just launched a, a newish company called Workology. I um, was hoping you could just share a little bit more about that and how people find you and. Yeah. So um, if you read my uh, blog that I've had since 2007, it's Blogging for Jobs, which um, is a little bit edgy. Uh, we like to push the envelope over there and, and have a little fun. I have 24 writers on the site who are writing. And so I, I like having the diverse types of people that are there, but I need a place just for me. And I wanted to be able to talk to senior HR and recruiting professionals about some of the topics in human capital that we're talking about, but put it in a practitioner focused way so that as a senior business leader, you have something that you can print off, a white paper, infographic, something that's practitioner focused so that you can really make the business case to add social media or a digital technology to your recruitment or HR plan. Um, versus just relying on analyst reports and um, you know other papers that are out there. So it provides a, it provides a practical way to uh, look at what's out there and, and, and find a way to you know look at adopting or implementing um, those, those social media or the technology. Anything related to human capital really. I mean I'm going to be focused on technology on the site but I feel like um, we need to have more conversations for the senior HR folks in a way that's somewhat casual, not really technical and, and wordy, mm -hmm. but interesting for them to read. Because when you read um, some of the information that's out there, it's hard to follow. And it isn't really fun because even HR people want to have fun. Yeah. So we need to be entertained as much as informed about the topics. Um, I think that's a, an interesting point you raise about some of the senior leaders of uh, hu human capital out there. Um, thinking about 
not so much the technology or exactly how things work, but some of the more bigger demographic shifts and the global forces that are happening. Uh, you know, what, what are some of the ones that you think should be top of mind for, for people that are uh, planning, you know, planning their workforce over the next five years and beyond? Uh, there was an interesting uh, session about millennials yesterday, which I really enjoyed. I, I think the main thing to remember when we're looking at the younger workforce is not everybody fits into this box that we want to put them in. Um, I am a Gen X, but I have a lot of millennial tendencies, which uh, I think a lot of people do. I have a really great friend who is a boomer that she is millennial through and through. The, the thing for I think it's important for people to remember as far as age goes and experience is that these millennials, well, whatever their tendencies are, the helicopter parents, all the things that we're dealing with, they are now the majority workforce. And so if you are marketing to that audience to have them come and work for you, you need to make sure that your messaging, the company culture, and all these things are aligned to work with those people. It's just like trying to sell um, a product or a service. Why would we sell Tide laundry detergent to men over 65? The audience is females, probably 24 to 40. Uh, your messaging needs to align with that. And, and be relevant to the person you're engaging it's, with. And it's not about the senior business leader. They're not the target market. And I think that's the other thing. When you talk to the chief HR officer, the CEO, they're like, I don't get the social media. I don't understand. Like, I don't use text messaging the same way. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's about the people uh, that you're trying to reach, the best and largest audience that you're looking for to, to come to work for you. The CEOs are not the target demographic. So what they want right, doesn't matter. Right. One of, the, one of the interesting things for me in that session that you just mentioned uh, was that there are a lot of actual common factors across all the generations and um, also delineating the sort of, you know, categorized generations with just the fact that people are at different stages of life and, you know, people at stages of life is very different from these generational traits that we sort of, um, sort of dump or uh, sort of attribute to people. Um, how, how do you, how do you how do you feel about it? what do you see about the way um, you know different generations are working together and and especially in this day and age where there is a, a sort of democratization of work? I think that the main thing is just sitting down and talking to your people and honest conversations. A lot of times employees are giving the answer that they think that you want, which is really not what they want. So getting to know your folks talking to them uh, on a regular basis, probably scheduled, to have an understanding of what their hopes and dreams are. The other thing is too, if you're building a strategy with a particular audience of people in mind, use your current workforce, especially yeah. the newly hired folks, and conduct interviews with them, focus yeah. groups, surveys, that sort of thing. Where are they coming from? Where are they spending their time? And if that's the audience of people that you're looking for, you can create you know, a small strategy from that group of people and they have real feedback that is as recent and you don't have to spend a lot of money um, using a large third-party company to, to conduct the research for you. I mean I think it's a, it's a great point um, talking about transparency and increasing the, the, the dialogue or the two-way chat um, be between uh, employees and existing employees uh, and also prospective employees as well. I, social media is is leading the way for that. We're used to having real transparent conversations with brands, with people online. So it's going to transition over into the workplace. Employees are expecting that and are want to feel empowered that somebody is listening to their problems, what they have to say, and that they do in fact want to make a difference. Long gone are the days, like my dad, he goes to work, he works on a printing press, he's done it for 35, 40 years. He is a machine, that's what he does. He can separate work Right. from life. Yeah. Um, I, on the other hand, I don't operate that way. Right. Um, they cross over for me. Right, right. That's, um, that's, that's an interesting point. I, I, feel, I personally feel the same, the same way as well. Um, and you've got to have fun, right? Uh, fun is important. I mean, that's why we live, right? I mean, to enjoy the moments with our family, our friends, and, and we spend a lot of time at work. Uh, more time than we do with our family. So it makes sense that we should enjoy the people and the work that we're doing. It's interesting that you said we must enjoy, we spend a lot of time at work rather than doing work. Well, and, and my in impression of work for me, like I don't, I work, I spend a lot of time doing what I love yeah. um, with clients on the blog, you know, things like this. It's not really work. Right. Um, my office is virtual, so yeah. my commute is 15 seconds right. every single day. Right. And I um, have clients all over the world. So work for me 
is a little bit different than I think a lot of the traditional work. I, I did manage to uh, to find you just in the in the room over there working working really hard and was, uh, and, and yeah. convinced you to come over and have a chat. So, <laughs> so Jessica, two words: San Francisco. Um, I'm moving, so we're going to be relocating in, in the next few months to the to the Bay Area. I feel like I need to be where all the evolution and the change and, and things are happening, and it, especially with technology. And that's really a three places: New York, San Francisco, or Austin, Texas. My husband is a Sooner fan. I cannot go to Texas. Um, it would be maybe the end of, of our marriage, and I don't want to put him through um, that kind of misery in uh, Austin being a Sooner. It's too cold in New York City, so uh, the Bay Area is a, a fabulous place and it's just, it's the smell of possibility there. There are so many cool people doing amazing things in their garages. So stay tuned for Jessica Miller Merrill or Jessica M Squared in San Francisco coming to a, a store near you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Jessica. Sure.